Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, July 2nd. So today we have the moon in Sagittarius preparing us, prepping us for the full moon in Capricorn. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will lock into the Capricorn energy at 1.21 p.m. This is definitely going to bring on the weight, bring on the funk, if you will, because this is a pretty heavy-duty full moon, if I do say so myself. Go ahead, listen to the Astro Forecast, listen to July's Energy Forecast, download the Moon Guide, download your Zodiac Forecast so that you understand the impact of this full moon event and where it's taking place in your life. There are nine different aspects here today. Seven of them will involve the moon. The moon is going to make an interaction with Jupiter and seeing as the moon is still very much in the Sag energy at this point, we are interacting with Sag's ruler, which is Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings in Taurus energy is here to ground us, here to stabilize us, here to show us where it is in our physical realms that we have the opportunity to make some very big changes. Now, the moon in Sag has us kind of positioned to think of a big dream, a big vision to kind of amp up our optimism, our confidence that we're able to actually bring certain aspects to life. And of course, Jupiter in this Taurus energy is going to support that confidence, support that optimism, but also provide us with a little bit more of a realistic approach on how it is that we are going to start building towards bringing these dreams and visions to life. The moon in Sag will interact with Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is a kind of a tap in on spiritual wisdom. Now, of course, Saturn being retrograde in this Pisces energy, it has us kind of emotionally speaking, kind of sorting through our roles and responsibilities, our commitments, our obligations, where it is that we're at in life, whether or not we still are attached to it, still aligned with it, still inspired, still motivated to kind of keep trucking through and making things happen, or are we kind of changing our belief system? Now, the moon in Sag definitely hypes us up, keeps that optimism, keeps that confidence flowing. This is a good interaction, which means that we are really rising to the occasion of being logical and practical with our dreamscapes. And we are kind of sorting through in our higher selves what it is that we're being called to walk away from, what it is that we're being called to walk closer to. The moon is then going to trine beautiful energy with Mars, who is in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So this is going to fire us up in a lot of ways. We are inspired. We're motivated. We want to take action. We want to plan. We want to strategize. We want to be determined enough to push through the challenges and obstacles that we know that we are going to face in order for us to actually pursue new passion projects, new creative ideas, really get down to the nitty gritty and understand that we are about to break away from the old and that high level of inspiration, motivation, and determination, we really need to tap into the warrior-like spirit of Mars in order to push through the blockages that we know that we're going to encounter in order to kind of deviate from the reality, the circumstances, the plan that we were pouring into in order to start something fresh. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, is making a very positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, retrograde now in Pisces energy. If you have to go back and listen to that astro forecast to understand what the next five months of dealing with the nitty gritty reality is going to be for us, then please go ahead and do so. Uh, But Venus and Neptune. Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. So Neptune is where we attach to the higher realms of intelligence, where we align with our higher self and intuition, where we're downloaded with new visions, new dreams, new ideas, new strategies. The Venus energy is how we bring it into the physical body, where it is that we kind of mull over it in our heart space. Venus, of course, is the portal that we bring these ideas and inspirations to life. So there is going to be some sort of epiphany, some sort of intuitive insight that comes over us really getting that heart space activated and really inspiring us to continue to hold that vision hold that dream very very firm in our third eye and in our heart space 
So the last aspect that the moon and Sag is going to make before going void, of course, is a square. Doesn't feel so good. We're getting into the boxing ring with Neptune. And here's the thing. Neptune now being retrograde means that we're not able to kind of visualize on the future as much. We have to move inward, really reflect back on what it is that we've been avoiding. We have to clean up the debris of the past. We have to kind of give ourselves an opportunity to get our head out of the clouds and actually deal with the here and now. Now, the moon and Sag doesn't like this at all. We want to be hopeful and wishful. We want to dream. We want to project ourselves in the future. But now with this retrograde energy, we're kind of putting the pause on actively trying to move forward. And instead, we're having to deal with the present moment. We're even further having to deal with the past, really cleaning up the, cl the space, cleaning up our beliefs, refining our visions and dreams, and really dealing with the nitty gritty that many of us have been avoiding for many, many moons now. So the moon goes void which is always a very unstable energy. And while the moon is void, the moon still very much in Sag energy is going to make a interaction with Uranus. Uranus is the great awakener. He likes to shock us. He likes to disrupt us. He likes to throw wild card energies, wrenches into our plans in order for us to break away from our attachments, break away from the old and actually open ourselves up to some spontaneous change and transformation that is very much needed. Now, this is a beautiful aspect because we're receiving insight, we're receiving epiphanies, we're receiving visions on what the path and plan moving forward actually looks like. And this is a lot of wisdom, a lot of higher intelligence that we're receiving here. So we may not be able to articulate it right away, but we're on the cusp of change. We feel something changing and transforming in us and we are more open to these changes than we've been in the past venus the goddess of love beauty worth pleasure money is going to square uranus shortly after so just when we're kind of feeling the good vibes suddenly there's going to be a little bit of a wind knocked out of our sails so to speak so this is going to present us with a little bit of a choice point, a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a struggle. Keep in mind that we're in the realm of the full moon and in the full moon, new information and details emerge. So what Venus and Uranus are kind of doing for us is it's showing us where it is that we are kind of being pulled in different directions. It means that we are feeling like the Venus energy, of course, wants connection, wants closeness, wants intimacy. The Uranian energy wants space, wants distance, want to kind of be by ourselves until we get ourselves sorted and we understand what it is that we are kind of fighting for, what it is that we want to change. So this is very much about uh, feeling that divide within us. It is also about kind of seeing the clash, seeing the struggle, because Venus being in this Leo energy has of course, it's a fire energy, has us very impulsive, has us very much wanting to initiate, has us very much focused on new attractions. But the whole jive thing is, is that it's impulse, it's risky, it's not stable. And so the Iranian energy that usually brings in like a high potent electricity to our central nervous system, this is making us restless. This is like tapping into where it is that we want to rebel against some of the topics and themes that are coming up in our personal relationships. This is really going to put us in a cluster F, if you will, between our heart and our head, especially where decision making is concerned, where love and finances are concerned, because that's what Venus is trying to really align with her heart space to figure out what kind of changes need to be made in the physical realm, especially where love and money is concerned. And so this is going to just bring on a lot of discontentment. We're not okay. We're not feeling happy. We are not happy. We are not feeling the fun, feeling the joy. We are not even interested in the things that used to give us happiness and joy. And it just kind of feels like we're just uncomfortable in our skin. And so because of this, and because we're moving into this full moon window, please be very cautious of how it is that you exert yourself. Please do not be acting on impulse. Please kind of give your physical body a healthy outlet to kind of transmute some of these energies because it really can feel like a lot of anxiety, a lot of electricity that we don't know what to do with. 
So the moon, still very much in Sag energy, still void of course, is going to interact with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in this Capricorn energy. And this little situation provides us with an opportunity to see where it is that our inner realm is changing, where it is that we understand, where it is that we feel, feel powerless and where we're attempting to take that power back. We are being illuminated to where it is that we don't feel like we have as much control over our circumstances, over our emotions, over our thoughts as we would like, and we are going to attempt to take that control back. Does it feel good? No. Is it necessary? Yes. What's going to come out of this? Well, we're going to be internally prepped mind, body, and soul in order for us to really adapt to some of the changes that are going to be thrown at us when this full moon peaks. Now we enter into the Capricorn energy, like I previously mentioned, 1.21 PM Eastern Standard Time. At 3.48 PM, we're going to have our first and only aspect with the moon in Capricorn for the rest of the day, which is kind of wild to go that much chunk of time in a run of a day with no aspects. But Anywho, the moon fresh in Capricorn energy is going to try and make a beautiful interaction and aspect with the North Node in Taurus energy. This is what gives us our trine because it's Earth on Earth energies. And what we're recognizing here, first of all, we are very rooted in our physical body. We are very concentrated on our physical realm circumstances. The true node is trying to get us on the right path for our soul's mission, for our soul's potential. This screams of having a realistic, practical approach to the plan and strategy that we need to put into play in order to grow in order to heal in order to change in order to transform our physical circumstances this is definitely the energy and the element that we're really going to be struggling with over the next couple of days with this full moon and capricorn reaching its peak